Johnny Manziel had one of the craziest football careers ever. Johnny Football. He took college football by storm as a freshman and ended up winning the Heisman Trophy and became a first round pick in the NFL draft. But he was a massive bust. He was a mess off the field and constantly got himself in trouble. But damn if he wasn't fun as hell to watch. And we got to see a lot of that behind the scenes in Netflix's new documentary about him, Untold Johnny Manziel. It's a great, great doc, but it doesn't mention everything. Johnny Manziel was an absolute menace at Tyvee High School in Kerrville, Texas. In three seasons, he had 7,500 passing yards with 75 touchdowns and just 15 interceptions, and he rushed for over 4,000 yards and 78 touchdowns. He was insane, but he was still just a three-star recruit. He originally committed to Oregon, but then switched to Texas A&M. He redshirted his first year, and then everything changed for the Aggies. They jumped from the Big 12 to the SEC, kept Kevin Sumlin was their new head coach, and Ryan Tannehill had just left for the NFL. The Netflix doc really does make it seem like AM wasn't shit before Manziel, but that's really just not the case. They also kind of gloss over just how easy Manziel's life was at AM. Don't get me wrong, he was incredible, and I loved watching him, and he was so much fun. But if he didn't have the pieces around him that he did, his life probably looks really different. Four of his offensive linemen went on to be first round draft picks Luke Jokel, Jake Matthews. Jermaine Effetti and Cedric Abouye. Not to mention, he got bailed out by Mike Evans pretty often, who is literally a future Hall of Famer. Still, Johnny Manziel was fun as hell to watch and absolutely lit it up in 2012. The peak of that season was really when AM went to Tuscaloosa and beat number one Alabama 29 24. Manziel was starting to get talked about as a potential Heisman guy and did ultimately win it and was the first freshman to do so. Jameis Winston did not too long after, too but the point stands. Manziel finished the season with 3,700 yards, 26 touchdowns, and 6 interceptions. He also rushed for 1,400 yards and 21 touchdowns. From then, that's really when the off-the-field issues started piling up. He had already been arrested right before he became the Aggie starter, but then in the 2013 offseason, he was kicked out of parties, tweeting that he couldn't wait to leave College Station, and left the Manning Passing Academy early for apparently oversleeping. But the biggest thing that was coming up was the illegal payments for autographs. If you haven't seen the documentary, you absolutely should because the way him and his friend set up their autograph business or whatever you want to call it was literally genius and it's the only reason why they didn't really get caught. Manziel and his friend started the narrative that he came from a lot of money, even though he didn't, so people just wouldn't ask what he was doing with so many expensive things and hanging out with all these rich people. Well, he had that money because he was signing a ton of autographs for ridiculous ridiculous amounts of money. That was very not okay in the old NCAA rules before NIL, but the NCAA couldn't even find evidence, so he was suspended for just the first half of the season opener and went on to have another good year. Manziel passed for 4,100 yards, 37 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions, and rushed for 750 yards and 9 touchdowns. He ended up finishing 5th in Heisman voting. Johnny Manziel decided to declare for the 2014 NFL Draft after his third year at Texas a and he was a really interesting draft prospect, to say the least. He had obviously been really damn good when he was playing at AM, but he was a head case. He was considered a first rounder and even a potential top five pick, but opinions about him were literally all over the place. Some scouts said he was a dude that shouldn't be drafted at all, and others just loved his fire and thought he was a rare competitor. At the draft, he did have to wait a while to actually hear his name called. The Browns ended up trading up from 26 to 22 to draft Manziel. Manziel actually actually texted the Browns quarterbacks coach that he wanted to wreck the league in Cleveland and he ended up forwarding that text to the Browns head coach and then Manziel ended up in Cleveland and he was pretty much a disaster in every single way. He even managed to get fined in the preseason before even playing in the regular season for flipping off the Redskins sideline. Now Brian Hoyer ended up being the Browns week one starter and Manziel had to wait a long while to actually see the field. He ended up coming into a game in November because Hoyer was struggling 
Manziel ended up scoring his first career touchdown on a 10-yard rush and overall finished 5 of 8 for 63 yards. He then made his first NFL start in week 15 against the Bengals. To say that it didn't go very well would be one hell of an understatement. He went 10 of 18 for 80 yards and had two interceptions. Cleveland literally lost 30 to zero. In just his second start, he ended up completing three of eight passes against Carolina before he left the game with a hamstring injury. His rookie year was a complete disaster in every way. He only completed 18 of 35 total passes for 176 yards and had two interceptions. No, he did not pass for a single touchdown. It was a joke of a season, and his work ethic and commitment were being questioned. As we know now, he didn't even watch film. In the Netflix doc, we learned that his film time watched was literally 0.0. .0. He didn't watch film at all. He didn't care, and that showed. Again, he wasn't even the Browns starter in week one of 2015, but he did come into that game after an injury to Josh McCown. Well, Manziel had his first career touchdown pass a 54 yarder to Travis Benjamin, but he turned it over three times and the Browns got blown out. He did, however, get a win the next week over the Titans after he had 172 yards and two touchdowns. McCown ended up coming back and that put Manziel back on the bench until week seven when Cowan hurt his shoulder. McCown even got hurt the next week too. Manziel got a few more starts in the year and he was even considered the starter for the rest of the season at one point, but then got benched after videos of him partying in Texas during the bye week came out. He did end up starting again but overall, it was just a complete mess of a year. He finished 2-4, and four, completed 57.8% of his throws, and had 1,500 yards with 7 touchdowns to 5 interceptions. He sucked, and was constantly having problems off the field, too. Manziel was pulled over after fighting with his girlfriend and admitted to drinking earlier, and right before the Browns' final regular season game, he was seen at a Las Vegas casino after being scratched with a concussion. Ultimately, the Browns just decided to release him in the offseason, and his agent dropped him, too. He was dealing with a domestic violence charge and was suspended for the first four games of 2016 anyway for violating the league's substance abuse policy. Johnny Manziel never played in the NFL again, but he did play pro football. After a year out of football, Johnny Manziel ended up signing with the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the Canadian Football League. Right before that, he actually played a bit in the Spring League too and was 19 of 31 overall with 270 yards, a touchdown, and an interception with two rushing touchdowns. He was also able to get some exposure at Texas A&M's 2018 Pro Day, where he was throwing to draft prospects. Now in Hamilton, Manziel was the backup for five games, and then he ended up getting traded to the Montreal Alouettes, where he could actually get playtime, and he did. He ended up playing in 11 games and completed 64.2% of his passes for 1,290 yards and five touchdowns with 11 interceptions. That was it though for him in Canada. He was supposed to compete for the starting job in 2019, but ended up getting released for missing a bunch of mandatory meetings that even just allowed him to play in the league in the first place. He went on to play in the Alliance of American Football for the Memphis Express, but only threw eight total passes, completing five for 61 yards and a pick. He ended up suffering a concussion and the league folded. The last time Manziel played football was in fan-controlled football, where in all, he's played in five games with three passing touchdowns, 245 yards, three rushing touchdowns, and 125 yards. Yeah, we're never going to see Johnny Manziel on an NFL field again. His career was very short, but it was super memorable. He was a head case off the field, but he's one of the most memorable college football players, at least to me. Johnny football was good, fun, and was a superstar, but he never worked out in the league, and it was because of his own actions.